the efficient movement of goods and other freight is critical for the economic health and well-being of cities. Because of this, communities develop truck routes that serve as the primary routes for the movement of goods and services to, through, and from a city. These roads are generally collectors or arterials that have been identified as vital to the economy of a city, and as such, have been designed to accommodate heavier, slower vehicles with larger turning radiuses. In fact, in some communities, these are the only streets that trucks are allowed onto. Not all freight routes look the same. In fact, in my community, this is a freight route. One tell is the truck apron around the roundabout. And this is a truck route. Not as obvious unless you're on the street watching Amazon vehicles travel up and down it every single day. What's more, states and federal governments also develop freight routes for highways under their jurisdiction. These routes are designed to facilitate longer vehicles, larger vehicles, oversized and overweight vehicles, and in some cases, vehicles of vital importance to the local economy. In my state, we have wind tower corridors, which are designed to get wind turbines from their manufacturing center in Manitowoc, yes, that Manitowoc, to other states. In Verde Beach, our lack of thought regarding our freight corridors has led to crippling traffic near the rail hub, near the Garden City, as well as near Mill Hill. Thankfully, our dutiful freight planning consultant, Hi, I'm Lee, came in and resolved many of our issues near the Garden City, and we now have this implemented into our city. So we're on to resolving the issues in Mill Hill. In Mill Hill, we have a few issues. First, I inappropriately converted local access roads serving the dual cargo terminal into an arterial going towards Nova Heights. So we're gonna have to call a mulligan and sever that connection, reestablish our turnaround and find a better way to connect that local road to our regional arterial, Semper Verde Boulevard. Next, the freight traffic in the Lewis Lumber Company has gotten so bad that the Lewises have threatened to relocate their operations from Verde Beach to the other VB, Van Buren, if something isn't done about all the traffic in the area. This is going to involve something that you might think is blasphemous based on things I've said in the past. We're going to reduce our connectivity in an effort to improve traffic flow. And then finally, we're going to need to resolve the issue of Wright Street being used as an arterial while Lewis Street, the actual arterial, carries very little of the freight traffic to the interstate. This may involve the creation of a second interstate access, though the movement may be limited. So we have lots to do today. Let's jump right in and tackle all of this freight traffic. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in today's episode, like I mentioned, we are tackling freight traffic. And boy, have we got some issues. And we're gonna go through them just like I mentioned, right down the list. Today, the very first thing we're gonna handle is right here. We made a huge mistake. It's time to call a mulligan. On this connection right here, I absolutely wasn't thinking clearly <laughs> right here. This wasn't the most appropriate place to come in with our connection from Nova Heights. We actually should have come right here into this arterial, which uh, if we take a look, let's see, this is Lupo Esplade. And this is where we're going to come in and make our connection. I'm going to make a number of connections right now with some dirt roads. You're gonna understand why in a little bit, but I, I think that we're gonna need to really give this some thought. So all of these things are related, all of these issues that we have right now. So let's take them one by one, but with an eye to resolve them all together. So I'm gonna pause it for just a moment because we're gonna sever our power. And over here, I'm gonna come through and only have our angle on. So I can try to just make it over. And then same thing here. We'll turn everything back on and let's look at our terrain. So we've got our contours back on, go out 12 and drop this back down to the ground. Now here, I would love to make this connection nicely. So what we're going to do is sever this connection here. I'm gonna have only angle on. We're gonna pull this over. We'll turn on road guidelines too, using our curved road tool, or freeform rather. Drop this down to the ground. And I wanna go as far as I can. And that didn't really do what I had hoped to accomplish. So I really wanted this connection here to have a nice tight curve. And at the same time, I wanna make sure that we are not harming our ability to make this connection. So I added the curve right there and now I should be able to, oh, look at that, that was a perfect 12. So this bridge is longer than I would prefer it to be, but I think we might roll with it. I do want there to be a different pillar situation. 
wholly necessary, but I feel like there'd be pillars on both sides of that path. Looks a little bit nicer. So we're gonna go with that. So with this, I'm going to connect this up so we'll go up another, eh, say we'll go up 10. We've got our terrain heights on here and it's pretty even. We'll pull this back and whoa, that is some flooding. <laughs> so that happens on basically any map with 81 tiles. So we'll result, we'll resume this. So anything that is off from the original 25 tile area has flooding. So we're seeing that here. So certainly not a good thing, <laughs> but, but there's nothing that I can avoid. So this will probably happen. I'll speed this up and let's see if things resolve in just a moment. Okay, so the water levels appear to have mostly normalized, but this is something that we are gonna wanna keep an eye on. It still seems a little bit off right now. If we take a look, we've got some water cresting here. I'm gonna put this down as something that is a future issue to resolve. I don't want this to be the case every time we start the map up. So whether that is, you know what, you know what, we're just gonna do it right now. So what we're gonna do is come in and we will build a flood wall. And when we look at our contours, this is already up there. So it's kind of interesting to me that this is a problem. Either way, we're gonna grab our top height up here, our bottom up here. We'll turn this on high. We're gonna come right up the side here. I'm not sure that I'm making this better or not. I think I might be making it worse. So I'm gonna raise this up and hopefully get this just high enough that I have a flat pad to put the flood wall on. Okay, so I don't know that this is perfect, but it's perfectly fine in my books. So what we're doing here is basically just attempting to create a little bit of a, a, a flood wall here to protect everything happening back here. We've had a lot of flooding and I would expect that this would be something that the uh, Johnson's aggregates would be interested in at this point in time. So here we go. We've got these nice little ponds here too. They'll dry out eventually, but for the time being, there they are. All right, so this is gonna be a very important road and we didn't sever our power, which I thought we were going to. Let's look, we're fine. We have a redundant power system, which is you know, really the dream. So we'll, we'll take that and be happy. We're still gonna make our connection here. And I've provided enough space to allow this road to be upgraded down the line. Now you might wonder, why did I build this? Well, the, the main reason is to sever this connection here, but we're also going to have an interchange right here at some point in time, so probably later on in the episode. Uh, but I think that we need to relieve some pressure from this one over here. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but let's finish this and we're going to add our roundabout back down here. So we will turn on our road length and our grid. Let's go up about 80, over 80, and up 80. And then we can just use our freeform tool, make our connections, and then just up, upgrade this. Now we wanna make sure this is going counterclockwise so there's never any crossing of traffic at this road here. That will make it absolutely perfect. And then the other thing I want to consider is reversing this movement through here. Now what this will allow to happen, eventually this is gonna be really important. First of all, it's not the right length right now. Let's fix this. There we go. So what I want to happen here is we'll reverse this, reverse. We're allowing as many vehicles in here as possible. We're crunching it down so that a car in the left-hand lane here could get around a car going in here, get through here, come around, enter here, and leave. So that is the goal. There we go. So this connection is pretty bad, and I think that we're gonna need to, to do something with this eventually. We're gonna need to find a better connection, but I think that this is very related to the, the right street issue. So what I wanna take care of first is everything happening at the Lewis Lumber Company. So let's take a look at this, and we've got a lot of things going on here. This right here, these two one-way roads that are going uh, through the, the lumber company, they're both part of a collector couplet. And that in and of itself is no problem. The bigger issue when we look at this is that there's a lot of other access provided through here. And a lot of these roads are doing more than just providing collector road support. What they're actually doing is actually acting as local roads as well too. So this facility right here, this large warehouse is spilling 
right onto this collector, as are these three warehouses, and the result is fairly predictable. You have a whole bunch of freight traffic just spilling onto here, it's backing up all the way through the Lewis Lumber Company. And then I wanna see where these vehicles are going. We click on this road, look at, they're going to the interstate. So because we never provided interstate access here, they're traveling all through here, intermingling with our rail terminal right here, uh, all the traffic that's going there, going up Wright Street, which we didn't want, then to, to get to Lewis, makes sense, I would take Wright Street too, and then getting on the interstate. So we can't facilitate all of these movements if we were to make a connection here because of the train track, but I think that we can facilitate enough of those movements to uh, really improve the traffic flow in this area. So let's get started on that. This is going to require the Lewis Lumber Company to really cooperate quite a bit with the city. So let's look at these warehouses. This is a plain timber, plain timber, plain timber, all set to balance, all totally full. And I think that's because of the traffic. Reestablish a new warehouse here. So go for a medium warehouse. And I'm wondering, we don't even, we've got a whole bunch of roads back here. I don't know that we need them. So Ashland Street, we're gonna sever right here. That is something I could see being a thing if it would resolve traffic issues. So this would require the vacation of rights of way. And we will add this new warehouse facility right here. But we're not done yet. So I don't want this to face that road because this is again, another important road. So you're going to add in Let's get rid of all of our snap tubes and try to eyeball this. And I'm just trying to line this up with the back, right here with the back of the, uh, so basically I'm looking at that dirt line right there. I'm trying to line it up there. So now I'm gonna take angle, put angle on only, and make that connection there. So this will allow me to rotate this around and we will set this to our planed timber. Eliminate these. So we're gonna set these to empty. We don't wanna lose all that money. And we'll even set this one to fill. I'm wondering if we can get some circulation happening through here. And while this is going on, while these are emptying out, hopefully we get more trucks in use. We got all 20 in use, so perfect. Uh, we're gonna see them circulate through here. There's a lot of things happening here on uh, Lupo Esplanade, and we're gonna need to fix some of that. One of the issues I see right now is we have Ashland Street, which is serving as kind of a, a two-way street doing the same thing that Tina Heel and Harris Street are doing. I'm gonna upgrade these roads, these industrial roads. I think it's just gonna help me figure out where I am. Let's just do this. So those are streets that I've touched. We are going to sever some connectivity through here. So I don't want these connections anymore. So Palm Street no longer made the connection through here. Even Ashland Street, we're gonna sever this connection right here and keep all of the Lewis Lumber traffic internal to itself. So now that I've severed those connections, you might wonder how do I make this without actually making it? Just like that, turn on angle only. Now hopefully folks will be able to walk through here, but not drive. So that is the exact kind of connection we want. We're gonna do the exact same thing here. This one it's considerably less happy about. <laughs> so we'll need to just go ahead and add a path connection. No problem with that. Totally happy with that. And we've even gained some new land to zone. Winning. <laughs> so here, we're gonna need to add paths to the side to make these work. Now get rid of these smaller buildings. So hopefully we get something with a bit more substantial massing. All right, so what that has done is really refocused our traffic internal to here. Now that might seem counterproductive to you, but I promise in the long run, it's gonna be a good thing for us. Now, one thing we're gonna to need to change here is we have all of this traffic here from our large lumber yard spilling onto Heel Street. Interestingly, these are on empty and they're full. So we're gonna temporarily relocate these so I can play with these a bit. So I'll turn this around. This is the height of realism. When, uh, when traffic gets you down, just spin your buildings around. <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be fine. So there we go. So now you see all of this truck, tr truck traffic now focused on Ashland Street, which is what we wanted. That will get it off from our collectors. We have it on our local road, and there are two outlets from this local road to get this out. Truthfully, I probably didn't even need to spin this around. We have this now loading onto that collector, but no problem dispersing things a little bit more. As I go through and make adjustments, we make adjustments to show that we have been in the area. So now we've got all this plain timber 
exiting the facility. This one's almost empty. We've got one more problem. So this building right now, the paper, to come through the paper mill, I guess it would be the right movement to come through and dump it off here. So maybe once we get rid of these, we don't have a bunch of trucks in use, things will be better. I think we've saved enough. We'll just get rid of these now. So this is where all of our paper's going. Now, ideally we would have this on a local road. Unfortunately, we do not have ideal right now. And even spinning it around isn't gonna do a ton. So right now we have all this traffic actually coming through and funneling this right into our little area right here, the exit. So that's a problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'll try something new. We're gonna delete this. We will spin that around. We'll focus it on this other road. And I think we're gonna try something different for our traffic here. So I did that because I knew that I wouldn't be able to spin this building around based on its configuration. So here we're gonna convert that to a two-way road. And here we're gonna call a mulligan on what we just did. We'll eliminate that road right there, get some new zoning, and then have our collector right here. Now I did that primary reason is I want to facilitate through here without focusing on this. So now it, we have a true local road circulation pattern here. So we'll add this here. So you could go straight through if you wanted to. And then we're going to sever this connection. So this is nice for a couple of reasons. First of all, it just separates this. We have a better throat length through here. So that's a good thing. And now our circulation pattern it's a little bit wonky, so you'd, you'd have kind of have this left-hand turn here. In fact, you may even formalize this and eliminate this road here, but I don't necessarily see a problem with it, so I think we're gonna leave it. So I'm gonna let this run for a minute. I think that what we're gonna see is this area clear up of traffic, but it's gonna need just a moment to process. Actually, let's do a little bit of vanilla traffic management. Let's look at our junctions to make sure we don't have any crazy stuff happening here too. We do, we do have some crazy things happening. Okay, so I've just kind of gone through here and I really want the movement on this road to be prioritized. We just want to get people through here as quickly as possible. Anything that's coming up to here, you got to stop and wait. We're really prioritizing this. Now this right here is a tricky junction. And as a result, we are not allowing a free flow movement there. We have a signal. And truthfully right here, we should do the same. Now uh, this is a bit of a problem. We've got this connection here. This is Ashland. We're going to sever that. And this is another issue where this is a local road. Feedback here onto our collector, not right at the entrance. That throat length right here was not long enough and that should be significantly better for us. Significantly better. And even right here, I'm gonna go back on that. We'll just get rid of that, formalize it. This is not a, not a well-connected area and it's, it's all for the best. So there we go. And what we're seeing is there were, there's a lot of stoppage here before and a lot of that stoppage is improving. Let's let it go for a minute and see what happens. You know, and as I look at this, I do wonder if another issue is that our roadway, our, our, our one ways are going the wrong direction. So we're dumping a whole bunch of traffic out here and there's not much length to queue. So we're gonna reverse this. And truthfully, now that this is reversed, I bet you it would handle traffic going this way a little bit better. We'll still keep it going out, dumping out down here. We'll see how that works. If this doesn't work well, we might just convert this. That would be a really clean movement. You know what, you know, we're gonna do it. It's gonna make a much more predictable traffic pattern. I like it a lot more. So, Mulligan Mania, but I think it's all for the best and you can start to see why. When we take a look at this here, we're just in a much better, much stronger place when it comes to our traffic flow. I don't even feel like we need to signalize this one. This movement, I am gonna signalize, this would be a heavier movement. Um, but look at this, we've given ourselves more distance to queue back here, which is always a good thing. And now we have much less stoppage. I really like what's happening here. This even now, now that we've stumped, <laughs> oh boy. I'm a bad person. I've got to rotate this around again. <laughs> That's the height of realism right there. 
Just keep spinning your, uh, your warehouses around. It'll be fine. So the reason we're doing this now is there's not nearly as much traffic on this road. So if we would have just, instead of getting uh, in our own heads, would have just spun this around or changed the directionality here right off the bat, we've been fine. That's what we should have done. The other thing is we have this shelter here. I would think that we want this shelter relocated. So we're gonna move that. That's not the height of realism and we're gonna be just fine with it. So this shelter does draw vehicles towards it and buses. And as a result, we want to make sure that sending those onto this collector to block traffic up right here. So much, much better. Now the big thing. So let's get this upgraded. I think we're gonna need to do something about this though. You see a lot of traffic backing up here and I think that this could, a lot of this could be resolved with a roundabout. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut this right here. And we're gonna start building a massive roundabout. So let's go up, turn all of our guidelines on and we're gonna send this up, we'll say 200 and we're gonna look at our contours. Ooh, this is not gonna be a pretty roundabout necessarily. Not if we don't fix this anyway, so we're gonna do it. So the reason I want this here, and we're gonna, well, let's let it go, it's fine, uh, is we've got a lot of movements happening here. And I think that if we were to have a roundabout here, we could have a free flow movement and maybe make some of that queuing that has been a problem completely a thing of the past. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna turn off our road guidelines because those are not helpful right now. We'll need to reestablish that bike connection in the future. And we're gonna pull this back as well. So let's regrade this out. This would be a significant project. Not for the faint of heart by any stretch. And we'll pull this right down here. And then here we're gonna do something very similar. But I think we've gotta really give this area some thought. So let's hold off for just a moment. Okay, so we have a nice connection there. Here we're gonna do something very similar. Come up, find our road guideline, have a nice connection in. Now here I want to do a few things. So I think that we need to elevate this, which you might say, whoa, 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 what are you doing? This connection cannot occur. I think with the roundabout here, we could have this connection come in as its own leg and have our collector connection be it's another leg. So that would separate this. Instead of having all of this waiting at a stoplight, we could have this traffic going directly into our roundabout, which I think will improve our traffic flow quite considerably. The other thing while we're over here, let's just get rid of that road. And while we are severing connectivity, we'll just keep it up, make our connection right there. And guess what? Now you can't turn onto Wright Street to get to the interstate because there's no connection. Perfect. <laughs> that certainly happens. So now we are funneling traffic exactly where we want it to go. Now we're going to do some things, some ugly things. And I'm going to create a temporary connection, I think, for the time being. There we go. So we'll keep the city moving and we'll, we will completely rethink this. We're gonna take it all the way back to there and look at how well I've graded this out. <laughs> I did not, I did not grade it out at all. So let's fix that. We're gonna grab our terrain height here and pull this up and over. So the very first movement I want to facilitate is going to be from here into our roundabout. And I think that we're gonna make this one fairly simply. So we'll come through, we'll grab this top terrain height here, and we can send that in maybe at the side here. We don't wanna to get too close to this. So I'm gonna attach this road right here and this one right here. So they'll have to cross a little bit, but I'm coming right in the middle of this. The idea being that basically they won't be too close. So I'll just even draw these connections at 45s. And now I have a nice guide for myself. So here, right mouse click with our slope terrain tool, left mouse click here. Now we'll come through here with all of our guidelines on. And then we'll make a nice connection right there. Perfect. Obviously we've got some landscaping in the way. We can get rid of that though, that's simple enough. So there we go. Now we've got some use out of this roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> and look at our, all of our articulated buses going up and down in confusion here. I love it. <laughs> there we go. I don't know where you're gonna go, spin around in circles for a while, whatever 
So now we're gonna need to get this up and over. So we're gonna need to find a height suitable enough to get this up and over. So I'm gonna raise the terrain here a little bit. We'll do the same thing over here. Then I'm gonna slope, actually we'll, we'll send this back a bit further. And then I'm gonna slope from up here down to here. So right mouse click at the top and then start left clicking at the bottom. Look at that, that's really sharp. And now we need to come in right here. So we are going to pull this out a little ways and then we will begin our descent to our final destination after create a little landing pad for ourselves. So I want this, the reason this is coming over here is I want this to come out straight for a little ways so that we have a good angle coming into our roundabout. All of these angles, you see they're basically at 90s. In a vanilla game, that's about as good as we're gonna get. The other angles, the turns, we'll focus on those outside of the roundabout. So we're gonna right mouse click up here, left up here, and slope this up. Now we're gonna have to do some things here to make this work. So I am going to come in at the bottom height with the road and separate these and add in a little segment here, three up. I'm gonna turn off all of our guidelines. We just wanna get this over. And then back here at the height of this, we'll make our, our stub connections. And I wanna make sure that these line up. They do not. We're gonna to need to redo this. Truthfully, I was able to make a really nice connection there using the curved road tool. So feeling very good about the way that that turned out. And now we just need one more connection through here. Again, our contours on. We are going to send this up this way. And then we'll use our curved road tool. And look at that, our beautiful connection right across there. So these are all of our movements. We just need to get this upgraded. And we're gonna rethink this. So we've had this have a dedicated bus lane. I don't think it's beneficial to us at this point in time. Let's go with the grassy side terrace, or side uh, path there. Sorry, grassy terrace, so that we don't have parking here. We'll send that right in, and I don't even know if we need six lanes. We're gonna go for it for now. We might take this down. To me, it seems a bit overbuilt. Uh, we'll do the same thing here, though. And right here. And I'm already seeing an issue. We're gonna just take this down. Let's see if we can get this down before if that does the trick for us. And let's even try it here. Oh, I wish I could have done that. This is a really pretty bridge, but it's not gonna work here. Unless I really fiddle around with a lot, you see that the pillars are just different. So I'd have to really do some work to make this work here. So we're just gonna go with our normal four lane road. We're gonna take all this down. This is overbuilt for the amount of traffic that this road would, would and we did anticipate this road to see. So let's not do that. Let's not get in the mindset of overbuilding things. Let's take only what we need. And while we're thinking about this, I want to look at where our bus stops are on this route because yeah, there's one right here. That's crazy, crazy times. We don't want that. And here it's inside of this neighborhood. We're going to relocate this to our bus only street, which is right here. So now we at least have bus lanes as we're exiting and then we go into the roundabout here. So that is good. Over here, we've got a stop here that is no longer necessary. We'll get rid of that. And we'll pull this stop to bef right before we enter this, really what is kind of an expressway segment. Yeah, that's, that's much better. That is much, much, much better. So let's get this upgraded. And I wanna, one of the benefits of what we've done here is we now have the ability to take this segment and make it a highway. So really get cars moving. So now cars going to this should be able to go very fast. We'll upgrade this and make this a highway segment. I would prefer that this is not a highway segment, but I think you guys, you guys know the way the game works. We are stuck with what we're stuck with, which in this case is highway segments. I want to see if I can get this to work here. Yeah. This bridge is really beautiful, but oh, <laughs> it doesn't always work for us. Sometimes we've got to accept that we can't use this everywhere. We, we have to go back to our old vanilla segments and they're just fine. And looking back over here, we're looking good. No water, no spillage, we're good. All right, so now we need to reestablish this power connection here. Very good. And when we take a look at this, when we get rid of all of these dirt roads, are things gonna improve? 
Let's make sure that we don't have any stop signs or signals or anything crazy through here. We're looking good. And I think we are going to establish this highway junction here. So this is a way to, again, alleviate the traffic that we're sending up here. I don't know exactly how necessary this is, but for the reality that we are sending traffic all the way up and around here to get to the interstate for a movement that we could easily facilitate right here, I could see this being a request of the city. Please, please, please get rid of that excess movement. Or add an extra movement rather so we can get rid of that movement over there that is excess so we're going to send this up here we'll go down 12 and we'll send this back another 12 and now we will have this issue where we have some bridge spans that are no longer necessary we're going to sever these and re-establish all of these in fact we're going to go all the way back to the train track and life will keep going on for us, even though the train operators would never be okay with this. <laughs> so just know that this is not the height of realism, but it's my height of happiness showing those train operators who's boss. <laughs> All right, we'll make the connection for them first, knowing that they are totally pitching a fit right now. And then we will reestablish our highway connections as well. See, we didn't need to pause that. We are fine. And we are going to make one last connection here, go out as far as we can. Same thing over here. And we'll get these upgraded. Now the game's inclination is going to be to give us a signal right here. I don't think that's necessary. So we are going to address that. I think a stop sign's just fine. And we're gonna need to clean some things up here. So here I'm fiddling with the vanilla game mechanics a little bit. What I want to do is I want to make it appear that this actually has an, an embankment of some sort, even though I know woo, we are have a, a peek into the upside down. I could probably tent, uh, be, probably be okay if this was a little bit further out. We're going to try to hide some of that by looking at our budget menu and <laughs> just trying to just put it out of our mind by looking at how ups upsetting our finances are at this particular moment in time. Let's just see if we can hide any of this. All right, Vecna, come at me, bro. We're good. So now I'm going to just decorate around here just a little bit. There we go. Now I want to see how much traffic this is carrying. Uh, and there we go. We got our signals back. So that's that's frustrating. We'll have to fix that. Let's take a look at our routes here and look at that. We're actually seeing a decent amount of traffic coming from here directly from the highway, entering the highway and leaving it. I'm pretty pleased with that. We come through here. Look at where this traffic is going. It is going here. And in some cases, just to get back on the highway in the reverse direction, I don't love the way they're using this ramp, but fully expect to see that. So they're not going up Lewis Street at all. They're just going straight to this ramp. Now this might be a rationale if we saw lots of backups here to adding a, a, a four lane segment here. That might be a solution, but I don't even think that we need it. Uh, that said, it would be a safety thing. So let's see if this is an easy upgrade. It is. I'm just going to do it and then we'll control our. So what this would do is allow someone to make a right hand turn and then have a dedicated turn lane to get on there. Or left hand turn rather. And have that had that dedicated lane. So just a little bit safer. That or a twiddle, a two, lane, two way left hand turn lane would likely be present here. So I think we're looking a lot, 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 lot better. But we've got one thing that we've missed, and that is our bike lane. So we are still, oh, look at that. Our backup is occurring. It's back. And it makes me wonder if we need another free flow movement. Now this would be a, a much more challenging one. We're gonna, I think I might go back to what I had done before. Bit of experimentation, not what I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Okay, so again, we have added this movement here. And in fact, I don't know how beneficial this particular movement is where they come in here. I'm curious. Let's just take a look at our routes again. It's actually a lot of that movement coming on, uh, going on. We come through here, pop out here and go on through. I don't like this movement. Oh, that is our 
factory. So we will allow our factory to meet up here, but I don't want that through movement again. And I actually have separated this and added this to the entry movement because the, the traffic flows are just much less significant there. And we'll reverse this back around, which will unfortunately mean I need to redraw this road in here. We actually could keep this connection here. I just want folks in this lane to make a left then if they're gonna do that. What we'll do is have a bi-directional here so someone could. Ah, that's not gonna work. That is not gonna work. We need a three lane right here, but we don't have any three lane roads. So we're just kind of stuck with what we're stuck with. And here again, three lanes would be super helpful. I'm wondering if there is value in actually just formalizing this, we'll make this a three lane segment. I don't love that. I think it's hokey, but I don't have a three lane road. So the reason why I'm interested in this is now we get dual left hand turns. And hopefully once this clears out, we will see improvement. Let's let this run again and see what happens. Hmm. So we're still seeing some significant concerns here, but this is really due to where this is loading. So this is a problem. I don't know that we have the best solution just yet, but we're getting closer. So here's another one, another solution. So we'll have two outlets here. I'm trying to slow traffic down here. So I added a stop sign, not totally necessary. Added a stop sign here. This one is signalized and has much more capacity. I'm hoping that this draws vehicles this way. It doesn't seem like it's doing the trick. <laughs> Let's verify. Yeah, no vehicles want to go that way. That is absolutely frustrating. <laughs> so we are just going to have to, again, continue to improvise. So the next thing that I could think of that might work would be to make this a part of that collector couplet. I don't know that I want to go that route. Truthfully, traffic is moving now. It's not backing up in bunches. Maybe I just need to accept a little bit. Oh, no, no. You see it beginning again. So I think ideally we wouldn't have these be so close. That That's the real problem. So this connection right here this the fact that this is spewing onto the collector is the problem and then even when it's not spewing onto the collector it's way too close to the collector that it's still caught creating backup within the collector so i'm gonna try one more this is probably a more severe solution but i think this one might work so what we're gonna do is come up come ahead here use a whole bunch of eminent domain now we'll make our connection straight through. So we've severed that road. And here we are going to reestablish this road. So obviously this is the sort of thing that uh, in reality, the, uh, many engineers would be fired if they actually constructed all of these things. That said, it wouldn't be constructed. This would be micro simulated in a model. And as a result, we would have the, an idea of how this would function well before it's constructed. So there we go. So there, now this traffic would come through and dump it out over here. We are going to rotate this around. So again, oh, now I, I don't have as many nice places to put these. So we wanna make sure that this is not spilling out onto our collector. So we're gonna have it load off that local road. So we're respecting roadway hierarchy. And now you can see this internal street really serves as the way that we are providing some of that local uh, that local connectivity to our buildings. So I would love for there to be a middle road that's straight through here. I don't know if I can facilitate that. I'm curious if we got rid of these local roads. Now clearly this is not the height of realism here. We're already in uh, significant reconstruction land. So let's humor me for just a moment is good enough. So that is what I wanted to see if I could find. I wanted to see if I could find a configuration that would allow me, now this stinks because this is loading now onto that arterial, but it might be worth it to get one through road all the way down here. Okay, so what we've basically done here is 
found a way to have a through connection all the way through this area. So now we have all these local roads, they would all feed to here, and that is a much, much, much more efficient setup than having all these crazy short movements through here. I am gonna let this run to see if all of this truck traffic that we're seeing now bunching up on this middle road, which I'm honestly not super concerned about that. So that was silly, but I needed to move that over so that it's uh, balanced in between these two roads. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we'll make it seem like there was a reason that I did that. We'll add some landscaping. There. We just wanted a well-landscaped uh, little factory district right here. We need it. We need, when we're making paper, it needs to be very attractive nearby. So lots of traffic through the middle of here, but our collectors are empty and we could even handle some of this by adding extra capacity down here. So I'm adding a bunch of capacity to get cars down to our collector, which I think is gonna be a good solution. The other thing that might help here would be because of how busy this is, let's just formalize this. We'll add a signal here so we can start to clear some things out here because this is really a challenging movement through here. And prioritize our collectors, stop signs for the roads leading there. So the nice thing now is this is our queuing distance to get onto this road here. So that is huge. And you can see that with just a little bit of vanilla traffic management, ensuring that we're prioritizing our collectors, adding a signal here to clear out the traffic. Look at the traffic flow that we have through here now. Here at 82%, things are a little heavy right here. 82 is about where we were at before, but I'm okay with that. I think that really this is about ensuring that we don't have any visual backups. And that is something that we have dramatically improved. We've got to finish our last movement that we never added through here. And that is our bike movement. So let's go ahead and reestablish our bike network through here. That is way too high, so we're gonna fix that. So that is what happens when you don't lower your step. Sometimes you end up in crazy town. So we are going to just, the C of two will do the trick. Not high enough, I needed to go one more. And then we drop a step as we come through here. And now this connection, I think we're gonna straighten this out a little bit. We have all this extra space now. We have no reason not to straighten this out a bit. And then clearly we should add a connection into this area if any employees wanted to bike to work, now they have the ability to do so. So I am going to clean this out. We're gonna do a little bit of landscaping and see where our traffic ends up. There's a lot of old vegetation in this area and I do want to improve some of this. Also kind of curious, like right here, that looks pretty bad. I wish I could do something about that. I don't think I have the ability to do so. Okay, so just a little bit of landscaping here and just wanted to make this feel just maybe a little bit more in the woods, if that makes any sense. I think we're gonna also upgrade some of these roads. We have a whole bunch of roads here that could have trees if only we upgraded them and we didn't do that. So I say, why not? Let's just do it. We'll upgrade these and we'll use the new tools that we have available to ourselves. I see we have a stoplight right there, so I wanted to change that. Same thing here. Oh, actually, that one's okay. That is a connection that we would want to see that on. In fact, we'd also want to see this collector have priority throughout the neighborhood here. So, good enough. Uh, wanted to just do a couple of things here, though. First of all, I added a little bit of an extra uh, apron here with our walking pads. The idea being that, you know, if a truck were to need to go over this, it's not the end of the world. This is a big enough roundabout that it's it's truck friendly though. The other thing, I'd love to get rid of this little segment here. This, in my opinion, really stinks. Let's see if we can fix this. I'm gonna pause this for just a moment as I attempt to fix this. Now 
There we go. So just a slight modification here to start that bridging earlier, which just makes it look a little bit nicer. Really, really like the way that looks in comparison to how it was before. So now you can see that we've got some really efficient traffic flow through here. Things are looking good through this district. A little bit of slowing down in a couple locations. Pretty unavoidable because of all of the loading that we have here. The only thing we can do to fix this may be to, to actually flip this around or even come through here and reverse our directionality on just a couple of streets just to make sure we've got it right. Don't always get it right the first time. Sometimes you gotta try, try again. And this looks like it might be the ticket here. And that is just allowing these vehicles, because they're all coming in this way, to be able to get around vehicles that are pulling out into this road. So that might be the solution. Looking much, much better. So with that, we have solved our issues in this area. Look at that free flow movement through here. We've solved our issues here. Our freight traffic is moving smoothly through here. Let's take a look at our traffic flow. We are at 82, which is beautiful. There's only one more thing to do, and that is have a brief city tour. Okay, and it's nighttime, and you can see that things are just free flowing beautifully through here. This may not have been the most obvious solution. We're really severing a lot of connectivity, but what we're focusing on is having appropriate queuing distances and throat lengths, ensuring that we are separating our roads where it makes sense to separate them and, and really ensuring that our roundabouts are handling all of our traffic flow, which I really like the way that this has turned out. I think it looks attractive and functions well, and it's absolutely stunning to see at night. The one thing we might need to look at over time is do we have enough lanes in these, all of these. We didn't, we haven't really maximized our, our lanes here and, and really focused in a micro way on how this, on how this operates. So in this particular instance, for instance, where we have all of these uh, four lane roads coming in. Maybe there would be some value and I'll see if it's going to destroy Yeah, It'll destroy my path. So I'm not going to do it, but we could go through here and upgrade some of these up until here where maybe it doesn't matter quite so much. That might be one way to make things a little bit better. It's operating well enough that I'm okay with the little bit of slowdown we have. Things don't have to be perfect. They can be pretty darn good. And I think that we're in a spot where this is pretty darn good. So. Oh my goodness, I forgot to check a traffic flow on the end and it's been oscillating between 84 and 85%. I'm feeling really good about these fixes. So I just had to drop this in. This is the best the traffic has looked in a long time. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about episode 100. So episode 100 is going to be an episode where we're, we take a look back at the history of Verde Beach, starting from the beginning and watch the city progress, explain the story of Verde Beach. This episode is going to take me a long time to put together, or a longer time than normal, I should say. And normally I'm getting episodes out weekly and uh, the time dictates what I'm able to do. This time, what I want to do is gonna dictate how long it takes me to put this together. So functionally what that means is it might be two weeks before you see a Verde Beach. If, we, if I can be able to get it done earlier than that, I will absolutely get it out. But I just wanna let you guys know that it might be a little bit longer than normal in between episodes because we're gonna do it right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.